deal for Nokia and is it enough to drag it into the 21st century? Um, it's, it is a big deal. Um, whether it's not, I, uh, I don't think it is enough really. You've got two titans of the past really kind of clashing together. It does provide Microsoft with the ability to merge the handset and the software side of, its of the mobile businesses together, which gives it a better chance of breaking through. However, I think Microsoft are probably being over-ambitious. Microsoft has stated that they're aiming to get 15% of the smartphone uh, market by 2018, which would be equivalent to somewhere in the region of 200, more than 200 million smartphones, given that the current Nokia smartphone run rate is somewhere in the region of 30 million units. That's quite a lot of growth that they're looking for, and pr pr practically, that, that we, I, do, I don't think that's possible. So you don't think that uh, Apple and Samsung and the like will be quaking in their boots? Um, not, not at the moment. Microsoft have been very slow in developing the Windows Phone platform over the past few years. There's been very little development on, on the software side. Most of the innovation on it has actually come from Nokia. So obviously the hope is that Nokia will be able to bring this innovation to Microsoft and spur on the software development. However, with the current reorganization that Microsoft is going through and the fact that Ballmer is going to be stepping aside at the end of the year or the end of it within the next 12 months, that is very uncertain. So it remains to be seen about how Microsoft can evolve and adapt to taking in uh, the hardware unit. Now, so, sorry, I'm just going to say Nokia shares rose almost 50% this morning, um, but the company, is, as we all know, is still a, a shadow of its former self. Yeah, it very much is. It used uh, obviously a couple of years ago. Nokia was the largest uh, uh, smartphone and handset vendor in the world. It was now, I think, it, like behind the many Chinese, smaller Chinese companies in terms of smartphone shipments and dropping rapidly in terms of the handset market. Um, what we see though is that Nokia does have a great good future with its uh, NSN business, the, its uh, uh, network vendoring business. That's after going through a major turnaround of the past while and then past four quarters has managed to turn a profit on that. So that's going to be the future that Nokia is looking at and that, that part of the business is looking bright. Does this deal do anything to address I suppose that what is the fundamental, certainly in terms of the public's perception of both companies, the fundamental um, premise that neither brand is cool in any way whatsoever. I mean, the, the brands are very, very weak. Does this do anything to address that? Uh, fundamentally, it doesn't because, as you said, this is just simply the uniting of two uncool brands. You know, this isn't. Uh, um, some sort. It, this doesn't make it any better. It's going to take a lot of investment from Microsoft to try to turn that brand around. Of course, the upside of it is Microsoft has much deeper pockets to do this than Nokia on its own would have. So you were in the situation where Microsoft was funneling a lot of cash into no Nokia anyway to try to support the smartphone unit. So Microsoft presumably just by taking it in-house is just absorbing that cost and is going to be able to push even more money into it uh, okay. to try to build that brand bigger and to make it better in the future.